Can you tell me about the which topic we have we have completed till yet? The topic that we have written or studied previously. So we have finished till the neurons uh, function three main functions. Of neurons, right? Yes, sir. We have. Let we study the synapse. Yes, sir. Have you written this one also? Sir, we haven't written the last point. We have only written till nodes of Ranveer. Nodes of Ranveer. Okay. okay. So let us start with it. Let's start. So today we're going to discuss that is uh, nodes of Ranveer. Now we are just going to discuss what is synapse. Synapse actually is a junction between two neurons. Okay. Junction between two neurons is called synapse. Okay. So if I ask you a simple question that, <clears throat> that what happened at synapse? So if I'm showing you that this is synapse, okay. This is synapse, the junction between two neurons. Here you see that this is a neuron, one neuron, and this one is the another neuron. This one is the another. You see that this is the nerve ending here. Nerve ending. Okay. Nerve, nerve ending. And another one is the dendroids. You see that this is the dendroids. Okay. Dendroids. So when the when uh, the uh, nerve ending of nerve ending and the nerve ending nerve ending ending of a first neuron meets at meets meets with with dendrites dendrites of other neuron other neuron that is called synapse okay the, the synapse is formed the synapse is formed. Or we can say that synapse care, the junction between two neurons. The junction between two neurons is called synapse. Okay. And you see here at synapse, you see that at synapse, this is the exon and this is the terminals. Okay. This portion is being zoomed. Let me explain you here that what is this? This is actually the zoom portion of this one. This is the this zoom portion. This zoom portion. Okay. This zoom portion is present here. Okay. You see that there, there it is, it is not in the direct contact with this one. This, this blue part is this one. This one is the blue part. Okay. So this uh, there is a, a special chemical chemical between the between this uh, this junctions, or we can say simply say that that uh, this acetylcholine or this neurotransmitter. This is the this is the chemical. This is the chemical that is called acetylcholine. Or neurotransmitter that is present between the two, between the end of two loops. You can see this, this one. If I'm saying that, if I'm drawing here, these are the dendroids. Okay, these are the dendroids. And this is the, sorry, synaptic terminals. And this one is the is the dendroids of other neuron. Okay, so they are meeting together. They are meeting together at, uh, and they are having a fluid in between them. They are having a fluid in between them, and that is a chemical. And that chemical here, it is called. This chemical is called. What is called? It is called neurotransmitter. You see that this is the neurotransmitter molecule. Neuro, neurotransmitter. Got it? Got it? Got it? So what happened at synapse? If someone asks you that what happens synapse or in what is synapse? Synapse, I can say that the junction between two neurons, the junction between two neurons is called synapse. And what happened at synapse? That the transmissions occur through synapse with the help of a specialized chemical. Means the transmissions means, means when the two neurons are being joined together, what would happen? What would happen? The, uh, the signals from first neuron reaches to the signals of with, to the, like the neuron. This is the first neuron, this is the second neuron. So, if the signal from this one is going to uh, enter in this one, so there must be a junction between first and second. 
and where they join together, that is called synapse. So that structure or that space or that uh, junction is called synapse. And uh, here, what happened at synapse? Simply at synapse, you see that uh, the transmission occurs. The transmission is taking place through uh, synapse with the help of a specialized chemical, a specialized chemical called neurotransmitter. We call it neurotransmitter. Okay. So please note it down. Please note it down what happened at synapse and what it says. Note it down. Yes. Here, copy. Noted, sir. Other students? Just a minute, sir. Done, sir. Huh? Okay, now moving to this part is that if someone asks you that the, uh, the conduction of impulse, conduction of impulse at synapse, any at synapse, if, if a question comes that the direction, any, uh, you need to tell that uh, direction or which one is the correct option, that uh, at synapse the signals has been transmit, uh, transmitted. So if, if somebody asks you or if a question is come, uh, has been asked in your examinations, then, if, then the direction of Transmission of impulse is from exit, exit of first to dendroid of second. If dendroid, dendroid of first of first to to dendroid of first to exit of second, exit of second. Means simply, uh, I'm just going to uh, write the answer here only. That at synapse, the direction of transmission of impulse is from 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 synaptic terminal. Synaptic terminal to dendrites. To dendrites. Okay, just clean it up. That the it is from dendrites of first. Uh, okay, uh, you see that the uh, you can simply write it at the synaptic terminal of first to the dendrite of second. Okay, so the direction of transmission of impulse is is And second thing you need to keep in mind is that what happened at synapse? The uh, echo transmissions of impulse from one neuron to another neuron is taking place. Moreover, electrical impulse, electrical impulse, impulse is converted, is converted into chemical impulse, into chemical impulse. Okay. So this is another another uh, function that is being done, or another uh, what is happening here in the neuron at the synapse that that if the impulse is traveling inside the inside the neuron then it is electrical okay and if it's traveling inside the neuron it is electrical but here at the junction here it is in the form of chemical impulse got it got my point yes got sir it? now moving to the next part is what are the limitation of nervous systems okay the so first is that electrical because the ner in nervous system electrical impulse is, means the transmission is in the form of electrical impulse so the first limitation is that electrical impulse will reach only those cells that are connected by nervous systems means that is connected by nervous systems only your nervous tissue or neuron the tissue which are connected with nervous tissue okay they are going to uh, receive the electrical impulse okay and those are not connected they are not able to receive the electrical impulse. Moreover, it is the important thing is that sometimes it is being asked as a, as a question. It's not a minute. Sometimes it is being asked as a question that why the transmission of impulse, why the transmission transmission of impulse 
impulse in neuron in neuron is from is from from dendrites dendrite to to synaptic terminal not reverse not reverse okay so please note it down this question It is being later reverse. Okay, so it is being asked that why the direction of impulse means the impulse only travel from from uh, this region to this region. Why not from this region? This means why there is a no uh, why there is no backflow of impulse takes place. Sometimes it is being asked. So you need to keep in mind that when an impulse is being generated, have you seen that? Uh, for example, suppose this is a water, or this is a lake, or something. And you need to pass from this point A to point B. Okay. And uh, if there are some blocks, wooden blocks that are present here, like this one, and these wooden blocks are such that that if you st remain still on one block for uh, for more than a second, then this block get sink. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to jump on this block, and instantly you need to jump on this block. Then you need to jump on this one, then jump on this one, then jump on this one, and similarly. You need to pass yourself from A to B. Got it? If you stick or stand for uh, more than one second on a block, this block got got stuck. Okay. So, is it possible that if you are on this block, can you move on this one? If you are moving in this direction, no, no, it's already no. sink. Yeah. Yeah, because when you stand on it for a second, it is it was sink. Okay, and it was sink. So, if you jump from this block to this block, you cannot jump on this one because for this time. Uh, it was inactive. It was uh, saying uh, it will take time to come uh, back. Okay. So similarly, when the impulse is being transmitted from one part of the neuron to another part, so for an instant, for example, if I'm saying that this is an exit, so if the impulse is transmitting from this portion to this portion, for some time, if suppose if the new uh, wavelength or the impulse is traveling here, so now when it travels from this portion to this portion, for some time, this portion becomes inactive. Now, from here to the when it travels from this portion, then this portion becomes inactive. Okay, and this is called relay time. So, in impulse transmissions, for some part, when an impulse is being transferred, this for some time, the uh, the part or region where the impulse was transmitted, it become inactive. Okay, so the correct answer for this one that why it is being asked so many times it is being asked in the examination. So, you need to keep in mind and you need to write the answer properly. That first, write down this question. Write down this question: Why the transmission of impulse in neuron is from dendrite to synapse, uh, synaptic terminal, not is from dendrite to synaptic terminus? Uh, or it can be asked why there is no backflow. Or second question: Why there is no backflow of impulse takes place inside the neuron? Why? Why? Why there is no backflow? Why there is no backflow, backflow of impulse, impulse takes place inside the neuron. So the same answer, whether if this question is being asked and or whether if this, if this question is being asked, we are going to get the same answer. What my point? What my point? So what is the answer? Yes, yes. So this is the answer. After generation and transmission of electrical impulse, okay, the cells take some time to reset its mechanism before transmitting another impulse. So cell cannot uh, uh, continuously or continually create an impulse or transmit impulse. Got it? So write this answer. Write the answer of these two questions. Abir, are you writing? Yes, sir. Vice, Hami. Yes. Yes, sir. 
Web, are you there? Yes, sir. Tejasvi, you are writing? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Noted, sir. That you are express. Should I move forward? Or still writing? Done, sir. Is there anyone who is writing? Should I move forward? Is there anyone? Okay. Let's move. So if the question is being asked in your, in your test, either this question or this question, the answer will be same. Got it? Got yes. it? Moving to the next part is a central nervous system. What we were studying till yet, we were studying about the functional unit of neuron. And what are the functions of neuron and how different different parts of neurons participate or what the function and how different different what is the function of different different parts of the neuron we have discussed this one now what we are going to study is central nervous system in the starting i have uh, asked you or i have taught you this one that the, they are the two agencies that control the central nervous system or we can say the control and coordination control and coordination coordination in human beings is done by two agencies one is the one is the nervous system nervous system and another one is the another one is the endocrine system endocrine system this endocrine system release hormones and hormones are the some liquids that is being secreted in our body that help in controlling different different parts different different functions of our body such as heart rate blood pressure maintenance of maintenance of uh, glucose level fat level protein level in the body and others this nervous system consists of three main part one is the central nervous system second is peripheral nervous system and third is autonomic nervous system ans CNS, PNS. Now we are going to study this CNS, central nervous system. We are going to study what we are going to study is central nervous system, CNS. So that consists of brain and spinal cord and spinal cord. Brain and spinal cord together makes make central nervous system. Okay. So what we are going to study is brain and spinal cord. Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. So let us start. Let us start with this one. So coming to this point is central nervous system. Central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord. I have taught. Now we are talking about the brain. Sometimes the question comes that how write a note on how brain is protected inside the body. Okay, how the uh, productions or uh, how does the protections of brain take place inside the body? And okay, so you can get the answer from this points. If this question is being asked, good examination. You know that brain. If I taught you this one, and this this is a brain, okay, and it is enclosed in a specialized structure called cranium. Cranium. This is the this is the cranium, cranium, okay, cranium, or we call it skull, skull, the hardest part of the brain, and it is made up of eight bones. How many bones? It, it is made up of eight bones. Okay, the whole. Face is made up of 22 bones, this nose, this cheeks, but the skull in which brain is protected is, is made up of eight bones. Okay. Inside these eight bones, if you see this one, let me, let me this one. So if this is visible to you properly, they are the three layer. One this layer, this layer, then another one is this layer, and, and, and the third one is this layer. They are the three layers 
from which uh, or which form the cranium. Uh, these layers are called meninges. These layers are called meninges. What we call it? Meninges. Okay. And the the names of these layers is the outer layer is called dura mater. The inner layer, this layer. This layer is called arcanoids. This layer whole is called arcanoids. And the third layer is called piamet. piamet. So we're going to discuss that these are the three layers. Outer layer, then inner layer, then another, another inner layer. Okay, the first layer, outer layer, then middle one, and the third one is there are three layers. Okay, and these three layers together are called meninges. So brain is protected in a hard bony cover or a skull. That is called cranium or a skull. This is made up of eight bones. And these this cranium is made up of three layers uh, of bones. That is, uh, that is that is called these three layers are called meninges. Okay, inside this there is a fluid fluid present. There is a fluid present uh, between the skull and the brain. Okay, that is called that we call it CSF cerebro cerebro spinal fluid. What we call it cerebro spinal fluid. Okay. CSF. What is the function of CSF? It helps when the brain, there is a brain, and between the brain, uh, the spinal uh, CSF is present or cerebrospinal fluid is present. So, what would happen? It helps the brain to it comes in direct contact with the brain wall of the uh, of this. Okay. Just imagine that if this is a bucket, if this is a bucket, there is a bucket, and you place a coin in it. So, if you if you uh, pull this bucket like this way, though this coin will start sticking this wall. Okay. But if imagine this bucket is full, filled with water. This bucket is filled with water. Okay. Now if you if you now you if you start moving this bucket, will this coin touch the wall of the uh, wall of the uh, bucket? Will it touch? No. 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 And in this case, this is empty bucket. There is no water present. Then in this case, this, this will touch. So similar case is for the brain also. When there is a fluid surrounding the uh, brain, that is called CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. So when we move our head like this way, and move, sometimes we jump, okay, sometimes we uh, uh, dive or uh, something, okay, sometimes we got stuck, our head got stuck with some some uh, gate or something, okay. So in that case, this cerebrospinal fluid uh, protects our brain from sudden jerk or sudden shock, okay, got it? Got it? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the main function. So, uh, so if I ask you that how brain is protected, so brain is protected inside a hard bony cover skull called cranium, and this cranium is made up of three layers. Uh, that is called meninges. The outer layer is called duramater. The inner layer is called arcanoids, and the innermost layer is called piamater. We are going to discuss. And inside this, there is a specialized fluid is present. That fluid is called CSF. That's protect the brain from sudden injuries or something. Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. So, got it down. Got it down. The brain is the center of nervous activity, highly complicated and located in the head region. The brain is enclosed in a hard bony cover skull called cranium, made up of eight bones. It is made up of eight bones. Got it? It is protected by three membranous layers. That is called meninges. These three membranes layers are called meninges. And these are outer. Outer layer is called dura mater. The middle layer is called arcanoids. And the inner most or inner layer is called pia mater. And it is filled with a specialized food that is called CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. So please note it down till here.
Jan, dear student. This noted down properly. The brain is the center of nervous activity, highly complicated, located. This is located. Okay. Located in the head region. The brain is enclosed in a hard bony cover called cranium, formed of eight bones. It is protected by three membranous layer called meninges. The outer layer is called neural matter, the middle layer is called arcanoids, and the inner layer is called pia matter. Noted, sir. That is the steps. Done? Other students, everyone done? Should I move forward? Yes, sir. Okay. Like, uh, write the next statement. That this fluid protect the brain from sudden shock or which way, uh, for which uh, it is said, uh, which, for which statement or which uh, fluid we are discussing here. This fluid protect the brain from sudden shock. Which fluid we are talking about? Here. CSF, cerebrospinal yes. fluid. Very good. Very good. So please note it down. Huh? Yes, so sir. Now, yes, now, sir. Moving, now moving to this part that we are going to study the brain. Now you see that brain, we are going to study brain now. And we are studying brain right now. So okay, we are just studying that how brain is put in. Now the brain we have divided into three main regions. Okay, the major areas of the brain, and we have divided the brain into three main parts. That the four brain, the second one is the midbrain, and the third one, this region is called the Hind brain. Okay. The pink is four brain. The uh, mid brain is the, this yellow portion. This is mid brain, and this orange portion is called is the hind brain. Okay. So we have divided the brain into three main categories. Further, we have the part also. Like four brain is going to have olfactory lobes, olfactory lobes. Second, it is going to have the first part is olfactory lobe. The second part is seri, seri brown. Or cerebral hemisphere part is third part is called diencephalon. Diencephalon. So let us study one by one. That let's study. Okay. okay. Part of the brain. The first part we are discussing is the four. Four brain. The scientific name of four brain for scientific biological name of four brain is prosencephalon. It consists of the following part. Which part? Olfactory lobes. The first part is called olfactory lobes okay it is holo structure responsible for sense olfactory though you have seen the olfactory indicator that are responsible for that can help us uh, to predict whether the substance is acidic or basic uh, okay uh, by changing the smell like many license we have studied okay we have studied this one uh acid person and salt of so olfactory indicators like this will have olfactory lobes olfactory lobes means that uh, we can simply say that these are responsible for the sense of smell. Okay, olfactory, holo structure, and these are these are responsible for the sense of smell. The second part of this forebrain is the cerebellum, cerebral or cerebral hemisphere. That is cerebral hemisphere or cerebral. 
both of them can be asked in the examination. What is the function of cerebrum or cerebral hemisphere? Got it? Got it? Why it is named as yes, hemis hemisphere? Hemisphere, you know that if you if you are having a sphere, if you cut it half, then this portion is considered to be as hemisphere. So actually, this this whole region is considered to be as cerebral hemisphere, and it is very large in size. It is very large in size, uh, so it is generally forming half part of the brain. So if somebody asks you that which is the largest part of the brain, so largest part of the brain is cerebral hemisphere or cerebrum. It is the largest. So these are the half spherical structure. You see that is in the half spherical structure. Structure and highly developed, highly developed and enlarged in men. Is it is highly developed and enlarged. Okay, and so it is a bit bigger size, and it is the largest part of the brain. Okay, I largest part of the largest part of the brain. Got it. So it is responsible for, for example, uh, you see that uh, cerebral hemisphere or cerebral rum, rum, rum is wine that is generally uh, you can memorize the function per jay, you must just by using this trick that rum is wine, then somebody drink the wine, what happened? Simply that uh, their intelligence, they are not able to respond, they, their speech, they are not able to speak properly, their speech got. Uh, means they are not able to communicate properly. The speech is a speech problem. You can see, okay, memory. They don't remember anything. Memory region. Okay, what happened actually? What happened actually when somebody drink the wine? Actually, there is a condition in brain state. When the brain gets swell, and when the brain gets swell, what happens? The it, it become the brain become congested. As a result of which, it is not able to respond properly. So the major part of the brain is is cerebral hemisphere. So when the congestion takes place, so the functions that that is controlled by cerebrum or cerebral hemisphere, the function gets get affected. So the intelligence, memory, speech, reasoning, these are all okay, these are controlled by cerebrum. What my point? That why it is being affected because cerebral hemisphere or cerebrum uh, uh, get affected or get enlarged or get swell when somebody drink the wine. So the functions of cerebrum uh, get affected, and the other functions is uh, intelligence, memory, speech, reading, and reasoning. Is it? Got it? Yes, it? yes sir. Yes, Please note it down. Note it down. Well done, please write me. Okay. Done, sir. Is there anyone? Uh, who is still writing? Is there anyone who is still writing? Abhi, you understood? Ami, yes. Yeah. yes, sir, sir. Understood. Just, just Under also? Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. Now, moving to the next part. If there is someone who is having problems or is still writing slowly, please let me know. Okay, we will arrange these notes for them. Okay. So, let's 
we are just talking about that is diencephalon. That is the third part of forebrain. It is the third part of forebrain. Diencephalon is actually this this region. You can consider that this region is diencephalon. Okay. And uh, from this diencephalon, what happened actually? You see that this diencephalon is unpaired and third part of the brain. So it, it is being asked that uh, the part which is paired or unpaired. So you need to know that it is a small, unpaired and third part of four brain. The third part of four brain. And it has it has it's it is just like this way. Okay, as you have seen. This way. Okay. So its top is called epithalamus and its bottom is called its floor is called hypothalamus. This is called epithalamus. Epi, epithalamus, epi, thalamus, okay, and its floor is called hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is a part of brain. Okay. And from this hypothalamus, actually the pituitary gland, that is a master endocrine gland that we are going to study, that is being attached Okay, by a means of this star, it is being attached. The pituitary gland is attached with hypothalamus. Got it? Pituitary gland is attached with hypothalamus. So the main function of this hypothalamus is, or this diencephalon, main function, the main function is that it controls hunger, thirst, temperature, of body fluid, pH of body fluid, anger, emotion, it is controlled by this. So sometimes it is being asked that uh, the hunger, thirst, or temperature of the body, pH of the body, which which part of the brain controls hunger, thirst. So their function should be memorized properly. Okay. Diencephalon or hypothalamus. Sometimes it is it is hypothalamus also. Means the function of hypothalamus may be asked. Okay. So the, whatever the function of diencephalon, just consider it as is as a function of hypothalamus function. But actually, diencephalon is not uh, the uh, the floor of the diencephalon, sorry, diencephalon is called hypothalamus. This is whole, this whole is a part of brain that is called diencephalon. Its floor is called hypothalamus. But sometimes the teacher asks you the function of hypothalamus. Whatever the function of diencephalon, write the function of uh, hypothalamus. Also. What it? Yes, sir. yes. So, but otherwise, the part, the, the name of this part is the third part of the brain is, is dying. So, it is a small third, uh, unpaired third part of the forebrain. Its roof is called epithalamus, and while its floor is called, its floor is called hypothalamus. From hypothalamus, pituitary gland is So, so many times it is being asked in the examination that from which part of the brain the master gland or the pituitary gland is attached. So, that is. That is hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is the part of the brain from which pituitary gland is attached. Okay. Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. Got it. And it controls hunger thirst. Okay. So, note it down. Tell you. Then we will discuss the brain. Okay. Noted, sir. Okay. Now, talking about this midbrain, midbrain, midbrain consists of solid optic lobes. Okay. What midbrain consists of? This is the second part. The first part is forebrain, now midbrain and hindbrain. Four, but the forebrain, the front part, then mid part, and then posterior one is hindbrain. So, it consists of the solid optic lobes. These optic lobes are helpful in features. So, if they are optic lobes, what is the midbrain is consisting? 
So midbrain is consisting optic lobes, and the forebrain was consisting olfactory lobes. So what is present in the forebrain? Forebrain it consists of olfactory lobes that is responsible for smell. And similarly, optic lobes, optic lobes is present in the midbrain and it is responsible for vision. Vision, okay. Vision as well as hearing, as well as hearing. So not only the one function is single perform function is performed by midbrain. You see that vision, vision is also controlled by control controlled by this cerebral hemisphere. You see that this is vision here. So not only the one part of the brain is responsible for particular functions, there can be more than one part of the brain that is controlling the same function. Got it? Got it? Yes, yes, this, sir. So it consists of solid optic lobes. Solid optic lobes. These lobes are helpful in regions and as well as in here. Got it? So please note it down that what does midbrain consist of and midbrain only consists of optic lobes. It has only one part. Done, sir. Yeah. Other students, is there anyone who is still writing? Should I move to the next slide or is still somebody is there who is still writing? There's someone. Okay. So let's move to the third part of the brain, that is the hind brain. It is a, again, it is it is consist of three parts. But the hind brain, like the four brain, consists of three parts. One is the uh, olfactory lobe, second is the cerebrum. A cerebral hemisphere and the third one is diencephalon. Similarly, hindbrain is also consisting of three parts. This is hindbrain. This is this one is the hindbrain, and it consists of this region, this portion, this portion, this this portion, and this portion, this portion. Okay. So first portion, second portion, and third portion. We are talking about this cerebellum. Cerebellum is the is the this portion. This portion is called cerebellum. This violet color portion. Okay, so this is present in the posterior most region. Posterior means the back side. This is called anterior most. The front side is called anterior most, and this one called posterior. So it is the second largest part of the brain. Okay, and it consists of what does cerebellum do? Cerebellum actually cerebral cerebral hemisphere or or we call it uh, cerebellum. Sorry, cerebral was that first one that was in the forebrain. We are just talking about cerebellum. 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 So what is the function of cerebellum? So in India, you see that bell is an ox. Ox. Yes, I'm going to give you some trick how to memorize the function. Bell is ox and cow. You see, ox and cow. Bell in India is called ox, not bell. Bell for plenty. You see. Okay. So you can also understand. Okay. So uh, just uh, bell in India and in Hindi it is called ox. Ox means if what happens if a ox comes after you? Okay, if you are standing somewhere and ox, ox is come, uh, coming towards you, will you start running? Start running. Okay. Start moving or hide yourself somewhere. Okay. What you will do? So you will start moving your body. This is the voluntary actions that is controlled by cerebral. Cerebrum control locomotion, movement of body part. If you are lifting your hand, if I'm if I'm writing with this pen, so I'm writing, I'm, I'm moving my hand. Okay. So this is all controlled by cerebellum. Okay. Cerebrum control the voluntary actions, means the actions that are in our control, that we can control. Okay. So cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain, and it is the center of it, one marks question comes from this portion, which is important. Okay, that it is the center of control and coordination. So which part, if it is being asked that which part of the brain is the center for control and coordination, so that is cerebellum. Okay, so cerebellum is that part of the brain which control or help in control and coordination. It help in movement of body part, help in movement of body part and maintain body posture. I.e., I.e., it controls, it control 
voluntary action. Voluntary action. Got it? It controlled voluntary action. Got it? Got it? Everybody? Yes, sir. Yes. So, which, which part of the brain control voluntary actions? That The actions that are in our will? That is cerebellum. Cerebellum. It has been the motion. It has been control in coordination, movement of body part. Movement of body part is considered to be a locomotion. You can write it locomotion. Okay. So that is locomotion. Locomotion. Locomotion is part. Locomotion is part. Movement of body part or moving. Okay. And maintain body posture. So it is it can be other which part of the brain help in maintaining the body posture. So that is that is uh cerebral. Okay. Got it? Wrote it down the function of cerebral. Noted, sir. Is there, there anyone? Sir. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone who need? We still writing. Shwe, you done? Shwe, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You understood. You understood the function of brain parts. Yes, sir. The next part is this pause. You see that this is. This is pause. This is pause. You see, this, this motion, this, and it is a nerve and bend bending. This is bending here. Okay, yeah, this is a nerve bend fiber. Okay, so it is a nerve bend fiber that lies between medulla oblongata. That is medulla. This portion is called medulla. Lies between medulla and the midbrain. Midbrain. Okay, that lies between midbrain. This yellow colored part is called midbrain. So midbrain. And uh, so we can write that the pons, what is pons veruli or what is the function of pons veruli? It, it is a nerve bent fiber that lies between medulla and brain. It serves to carry, what is the function? It serves to carry impulse from one part of this cerebellum. It is carrying this impulse, this, this impulse from this, okay. So one part of the cerebellum to midbrain. Means it is just, it has been connection between the, between the, Cerebellum and the midbrain. So, if, if some some information is being transferred from from this region to this region, so it has been that in, in the transformation of it. It's got it. So the, it it is it serves to carry impulse from one part of cerebellum to other part of brain of midbrain of Please note it down.
Done? Yes, sir. Done. Yes, sir. Is there, is there anyone who is still writing? Now, the third uh, part of the uh, end brain that is medulla oblongata. So many times it is being asked in the examination. So, you have to keep in mind that it is the posterior most and the simplest part of the brain. If you see, there is no coil. There is simply the posterior most and the simplest part. There is nothing complicated in this structure. This is medulla oblongata. You see, this, just, this is a just portion that is from here to here. It's a simple portion. And this is the, this, this part is spinal cord. This part is spinal cord. So, if I talk to you that this region from here to here is medulla oblongata. From this here, the spinal cord is originating. Okay. So if I'm saying that, what is the function of what is, uh, if I ask you that, that it is the simplest and posterior most of the brain, simplest part, so which is which part of the brain is simplest, simplest part for having the very simple structure that is medulla. Medulla. It is the lower part of the brain and from which the med, uh, you see that the spinal cord arises from this, the spinal cord is arising. So, if it is being asked that from which part of the brain uh, spinal cord arises, so that is medulla oblongata. Got it? Medulla oblongata is that part of the brain from which, from which, what happens? The spinal, spinal cord. Spinal cord arises. So, it is it is also called the extension. Medulla oblongata is the extension of, yeah, we can say that the spinal cord is the extension of medulla oblongata. It's, when it's spinal, uh, medulla oblongata is being extended, then it is from the spinal cord. So it is the posterior most, means the last part and the simplest part of the brain. The simplest, simplest. Lower part of the brain extend medulla. Lower part of the brain extend medulla. Okay, to form a spinal cord. It it mainly control involuntary activities. What, what it control? It control involuntary actions. What what is the main function? That it control involuntary actions. The actions that are not in our will. For example. Uh, sneezing, eye blinking, okay, coughing, so respiratory movement, peristaltic movement when we engulf the food, it goes into our, our food pipe, and this food pipe is start contracting automatically and help in the in the transformation of food from from esophagus from mouth to the uh, stomach. So if I if I simply say that it is the it is mainly it mainly control the involuntary activities of the body such as peristaltic movement. So, thank you. Vomiting, coughing, respiratory movement. Got it? Got it? So, yes. if someone asks you that, what question can be come? That which part of the brain control involuntary actions? That is medulla oblongata. Got it? From which part of the brain the spinal cord arises? That is medulla oblongata. Which part is the simplest part of the brain? Medulla oblongata. What is the last part of uh, hind brain? Medulla oblongata. Okay, got it? Got it? Yes. So, yes, uh, yeah. which part of the brain control vomiting, sneezing, respiration, respiration, respiratory movement? So that is medulla oblongata. Got it? So, note it down. Noted, sir. Is there anyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So, this is the peristaltic movement, the movement of esophagus. Okay. Um, the peristaltic movement of esophagus, vomiting, coughing, sleep. So, this is clear. Okay. Now, talking about the other point, that is spinal cord. Spinal cord. 
So we are just studying what we, which topic we are studying. We are studying central nervous system. Central nervous system, CNS. It has two part brain. And second one is the spinal cord. Spinal cord. Okay. We have studied this brain portion. Different, different parts, how brain is protected. How, what are the functions of different, different parts of the brain. Now talking about the spinal cord. Okay. So a spinal cord is the extension of which, tell me, which, from which part the spinal cord arises? Medulloblum. Medulloblum. It is an extension of medulloblum. Okay. And it comes through an aperture from, from the skull. The skull has an aperture. You see like this. The skull has an aperture. Okay. Skull has an aperture inside it and from which this spinal cord arises. Now comes out. And that is structure, there's that that structure or that aperture is called foramen bank. That structure is called foramen bank. Foramen bank. Okay. So that aperture is called foramen magnum, and from this, this spinal cord arises. What my point? Yes. Point. Now, what is happening here is that that what's the role of what is the role of uh, actually how spinal cord is being protected? So you see that this is the this is the vertebral column. These are the vertebral columns. Okay. And inside this, this yellow colored is a spinal cord. This is not, this hole is not the spinal cord. Spinal cord is actually, this is back hole. This is back hole, okay? But, or the vertebral column. And inside this vertebral column, what is present? This yellow color, that is called a spinal cord. It is protected like the pen, a pen riffle inside the pen. Got it? Got it? Yes. And it is approximately 45 centimeter, 45 centimeter long and extend from, from, from where? From the head region. To the base base, okay. From brain to base, it it, uh, it is and it is protected inside the body program for extra protection. It also has meninges. Meninges, what was meninges? Meninges was the three layer. That was the three layer that was pre uh, present in the brain. Okay, so here the three layers are also present. Got it? So it is being written that it is an extension of medulla oblongata. It is an extension of medulla oblongata that comes from skull. That arises from skull. Skull means the brain. You see, through an aperture that is called foramen magnum. There is an aperture present inside the cranium that is called foramen magnum from which the external cord arises, comes out from the cranium, this head region. Okay. Now, it is 45 centimeter long, thick and extend from brain to base region. Extend from brain, from brain to base region. Protected by vertebral corrupt. These, these, these holes are called vertebral corrupt and it is protected by this one. For extra protection, there are, there are meninges are also present. Got it? Got it down? Done? Yes, sir. Done. Noted. Is there anyone who is still writing? Let us be done. Done, sir. Is there anyone? Ami? Ami done? Ami Kamal? Ami, are you there in the class? So we have done. Yes, yes sir. Okay. That's it. Now this portion. Let's not control the. 
Yes. You see that uh, that is spinal cord will finish. Okay, we will discuss this one later. So that you see when that the spinal cord is seen from the top. When you see it from the top, just imagine this is a is a is a pipe like structure, and you are watching it from the top. This is the head region, top region. So you see there is a gray. Uh, this is a gray color substance present here. Okay. Regular substance, and this is the white substance. Right? You will see this this type of structure inside the uh, over the spinal cord. For example, this is a spinal cord. So we are looking at the top, like this. Okay. So the transverse section of the spinal cord shows the presence of inner zone. There is an inner zone. The presence of an inner zone. This is inner. This zone is called inner zone, which is butterfly shape. You see, this is a butterfly shape. Matter called gray matter. This matter is called gray matter. You see, there is gray matter. And the outer zone is called white matter. This outer zone, this this white, this zone is called outer zone, and that is called I mean, white matter. Okay. And there are thirty-one pair of spinal nerve that arises from spinal cord. How many nerves arises from spinal cord? Thirty-one pairs. Spinal cord plays a very important role in control and coordination, uh, and it is very very important. From brain, there are only twelve cranial nerves arise. Brain uh, from brain, there are twelve only twelve cranial nerves. But from spinal cord, there are thirty-one, thirty-one, so more than twice. Okay, got it? Yes. Got sir. it. So yes. uh, there are thirty-one pairs of spinal nerves. Do you see that this one? This one is the nerves that you can see from here also, from this diagram. You see that these nerves are coming out. These nerves are coming out from the brain. Okay, from the spinal cord side. So these are the cranial nerves. Sorry, spinal nerves. Okay, and one pair. This one. This is this this one, and this one is going to have one pair. This is one pair. This is second pair. This is third pair. There are thirty-one pairs of such nerves arises from spinal nerves. Okay, okay, got it. And one is spinal nerves. One is spinal nerves consists of a motor nerve and a sensory nerve. And what's the function of motor and sensory? We will discuss it later. So please note it down. Okay. Angular section of the spinal cord show the presence of an inner zone called butterfly shape. That is butterfly shape, and it is called gray matter. And the outer zone is called white matter. And from the spinal cord, there are thirty-one pairs of nerves. Got it? Yes. Is there anyone still writing? I'm done. Done, sir. Everybody is replying me. Is there anyone who is still writing? So we have done. Sure. Sure. Okay. So uh, this is still yet for the next topic. Please for the next class. Please write down the that that you for the next class topic means for biology that will be the functions of spinal cord. Write down the function of spinal. Cord. Okay, note it down. This is the function of a spinal cord. Okay, function of a spinal cord. Right, this one, one responsible for reflexion. Function, function of a spinal cord. Of a spinal cord. That is, that is in control in reflexion. Got it? Control reflexion. Function of a spinal cord is. 
it, it control the idea and responsible for reflexation. And the next last topic is, is this reflex section. Next last topic, next class topic. Got it? Yes, sir. So that it be for today. We'll meet you in the next one. That's all for today. We'll see you in the next one. Is there any student who's still writing or everybody has written? Should I leave?